um, we're doing work for a big client that's worth lots of money to the agency, but frankly, they're rude and unreasonable on a daily basis. No one's willing to stand up to them. One of my colleagues has already left as he can't deal with it. What do I do? Yeah, I wish I could talk directly to this person because, again, um, oh, look, money, um, money does get in the way of some of those decisions, unfortunately, for some agencies. And, um, you know, we have a great saying that <clears throat> purpose is not purpose until it costs you something. Um, and so, you know, the, the agency, um, if, if you're working for an agency that's prepared to walk past that behaviour, um, then again, it's saying a lot about the, the overall environment that you're working in. Um, and it's saying that the agency chooses to accept that type of behaviour and that, and that profit in that particular business is more important than its people. Um, I mean, the first, in the first instance, I guess, if you, are, if, if you are directly receiving the rudeness and the unreasonableness, um, I would call it out. My advice would be to actually call it out to, to that client um, to just say, hey, you know, something's not right here. Like what's going on? Can we get underneath it? Can you help me understand why they're the type of interactions that we're having? Um, sometimes it's that people are geared that way, but more often than not, it's that they might have other things that are going on inside them um, at, or other pressures that perhaps they're facing within the business and no one's actually stopped to ask them. You know, they could be getting, uh, we see it more often in, in junior clients um, because they're getting so much downward pressure from their business and they feel like they don't count anywhere and they can't push back internally. So they go to the next best step, which is they push on, um, on agency side because they're paying us. And then the threat of, well, if you don't like it, suck it, I'll take my money elsewhere. So that, um, I just, I fundamentally believe that almost everything can be solved through having a heart-to-heart, -heart, a proper human conversation. And so that would be the first thing that I would advise you to do. The second thing is just make sure that it's elevated to the point where the right stakeholders within your business are also aware of it and make sure they're really aware of what the um, implications of those interactions are having on, on you personally and on your team. Um, just to watch out. When we do hear of this sometimes, um, it might be that the person who's actually receiving that type of confrontation doesn't want to step forward, so then others step forward on their behalf. That makes it really difficult from a leadership perspective to get in under the skin. So if it is something that you are facing, you know, put your bravery on and um, get out there and confront it head on with the client and with um, and with your management team. Because if you've confronted it with the client first, again, you can go to management to say, these are all the solutions that I've tried. Do you have any other suggestions on what we might be able to do here? And if they draw blanks as well, then, you know, it becomes, well, it's an, un it's an unworkable situation and I am not, prepared to um you know encounter that any longer and you have to be prepared to walk away if that's where it gets to yeah i think that um we, we gave um myself and chloe hooper from phd we were with a few agencies last week and also mumbrella and um we did a mentally healthy presentation and and one of the things we talked about was you know we all talk about being able to support each other and have a discussion to like check we're all in we're all okay and that actually you know, someone might be behaving erratically or rudely, but you just don't know what's going on with them. And we only really ever talk about that within our team, but actually it's perfectly okay to ask that of your clients, Yeah. you know, because you are meant to be working with them as well. And sometimes it is because there's something going on with them. So I think, yeah, that's, that's great advice to be able to, uh, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Sabina, anything you'd like to add, add there? Um, I think what the core of that question is asking about is how to manage <clears throat> different um excuse me, different personalities and how to have difficult conversations. And that's a universal theme that we could talk about um, in the family unit, in the workplace, excuse yeah. me, <coughs> with clients, um, you know, across the board. And when that's the situation at hand, regardless of the, the place it's taking place, I'm going to have to go and get a drink. I'm, I'm choking. Um, I like to focus on the commonality and it sounds 
um, I know it's not easy. Whoever's asking this question is mm. probably feeling really, um, <coughs> excuse me, like they're, they're struggling or they're being personally attacked. When we look for something that we have in common with a person that we're having difficulty with, it does help to soften and shift the dynamic, both at an interpersonal level and also at a task level so that we're not thinking like we're against each other, both in the way we're approaching the issue and what the issue is we're trying to, you know, work on the task at hand. So just, that's just, um, it's a, a softening technique, I think. I, yeah. 